we'll see some great success out of the Falco. But here we go, game one. And already we get a shine opening from Magi, and I love the grab there. When you do the down air, you have to respect the fact that they could SDI, and that was exactly what Magi was doing there. Watching out for the SDI and going for the grab instead of the uh, additional down air to extend the combo. And already this could be the stock, still going. Yeah, absolutely. Nice follow up right there, but now none with some pressure here. Comes the grab and caught up on right platform. One more time, why not? Oh my god, that slide off was beautiful. Just able to kind of extend the sequence, and then the fact that none was ready for it anyway just shows how good these two players are. Okay, yeah, Magi kind of finding that sweet spot range kind of in the middle between short and long range where none doesn't have a good option to burst move into the Falco, and Magi gets first blood. Ooh, getting punished there for the standing laser after two beautiful wave lands, but gets the shine, still in the corner, um, giving uh, none a bit, of a, a bit of space to get out of the corner, but it actually looks like a bit of a bait. Uh, unfortunate short in there, though. We're back to neutral. Keeping it rather even right now. Magi with a bit of corner pressure, but none wants to fight his way out here. Another shine down there. That's all it's going to take, right? Grab ledge. All right, that's a solid stock lead for Magi in a matchup that is, you know, like traditionally at least sort of Falco favored. And I think, as I was saying earlier, you know, Magi has such a crazy punish game and kind of neutral approach to the kind of heavier matchups. Maybe not as strong in the floaty matchups, and it's working out for her so far. Okay, stuffing out the approach. All the action on this right platform. We'll see. Magi gets a little bit stuck up, but oh. <laughs> just fights the way out. I thought we were playing on land, not net play. Yeah, beautiful forward smash. You know, I think it is worth mentioning, as far as I'm aware, uh, Magi's breakout tournament was the Genesis where she beat Mango, right? Mm -hmm. I believe. So, you know, there might be that kind of personal connection as well to Genesis that, like, this is an event where I do great things. And beating none absolutely would be, oh, oh no! my god. Okay. This could be real bad. Yep. <laughs> but bad things can happen, too. So uh, we are almost back to even. 30% uh, still going to be important for Crouch Cancel, but none gets the first opening and is going to keep it going. Once again, beautiful slot off DI from Magi, though. Yeah, none starting to catch on a little bit to Magi's wake oh. up options. But as I say, it might be it. That was that was just like a, is that shine just going to kill? And because none wasn't able to get that SCI in, it was over. Uh, so really, really quick game of one. Where do you think we're going for counter picks? Got really, really scary there towards the end. I mean, I think if I'm none, you yeah, open up the space a little bit. It seems like Magi is kind of playing really, really solid oh. in the short to mid range. So we'll see none maybe capitalize, have a little more space to run around. Yeah, accidentally gets the forward throw there, but still not in too bad of a spot. Um, controlling center stage, making it difficult for Magi to get out of there. But both of them just looking for any solid opening, and it's Magi that finds it first. Could be huge. Oh. And it is. One of the things that I think I really like distinguishes Nun from some of the other players is because he's kind of like a chaotic player um, in his nature, he ends up being able to convert off of openings and like scrambles in a way that I think other players like aren't ready when things don't go their way. Right. And he almost always is, which is such a good uh, quality to have as a player. Yeah, totally agree. Nice power shield, make it Ooh. too. Okay, yeah, starting to kind of pick up a little bit. I think Nun's maybe looking for his defensive panic options out of Magi, was looking for kind of a roll in on that oh. knee, but might just take the stock straight up. Why not? Yeah, crazy that Magi has only done the double laser once before in this game already. Uh, Nun calling it out so aggressively. That is an option that, like, cliche as it is, isn't always safe, and uh, you need to be aware of it if your opponent's going to start spamming it. Ooh. Second hit of that hey. nair would have spelt disaster for Magi, but she makes her way out and takes the stock to boot potentially. What's the edge guard? Just grab ledge. I love that charge forward smash on the laser reset. Really good awareness from Magi to know to kind of like that it was going to connect, uh, kind of knowing that the SDI to get on that laser is so hard and none was not going to be ready for it. It's a really, really good conversion. Okay, a little bit neutral right now. Yeah, ooh, that laser was kind of scary. Real close range. Magi makes it work. Big grab out of none. Let's see what the follow is. Still, still maintaining good corner pressure. Oh, the short and really, really smart mix-up from Magi makes it so that she is able to recover and kind of reversing the situation. But again, such a good awareness from uh, none to do that up air as well. Looking for grab right here. Weak hit back here. It's not going to do much. And no jump from Magi. That's a bit of an overextension. Yeah, but with 82%, all she needs is a solid hit, like what we just saw, to turn it around. And just as I say that, we're back to even. Yeah, really, really close, especially in <laughs> game two. We'll see if Nun can close <gasps> out right here. That's that it. That forward tilt is everything. That is going to take game one to Nun's side, and we are going into game three. I believe we're going to be seeing something like FD. I think FD is a really, really strong counter pick in this matchup, particularly because of how 
much it buffs lasers. You know, there really is no other counterplay besides dashing back, like taking the laser or power shooting the laser, you can, or jumping over the laser. There's yep. still some counterplay, but it's not nearly as much. Yeah, and correct you are. We'll see if uh, Magi can take this one to the bank, get the game advantage. This is a oh. best of five, ladies and gentlemen. So two more wins for either player here to move on. You know, going back to that comment about Magi's performance way back when she first upset Mango at Genesis, one of the things that impressed me about her as a player was in these kind of stressful, tight situations, she would be hitting ledge dashes perfectly. Like, she would fastball the ledge, get a crazy ledge dash, and it would be like everything is on the line and she's still able to stay composed and stay so technical. Yeah. And we're still seeing that years later. It's, it's a kind of hallmark of her playstyle, and it's what makes her just so damn good. Yeah, mark of a good player indeed, we'll see. And it's the laser pressure right now from a stock down though. We have to see Magi kind of even this one up. What's it gonna be? Dare and no follow up there. Nice DI from none to get out of trouble for the time being. Yeah, both players really stand to win so much. Oh, that uh, is huge. Beautiful edge guard sequence there. I was gonna say so much, uh, this, this match is important for both of them. Both of them like, really, really kind of pushing uh, themselves in the kind of influencer side of Melee, you know, like really trying to do better uh, with their sponsors, with content, and uh, Genesis is kind of the premier place. Go ahead, Walt. Wait a minute, okay. Just roll up, well, yeah. I mean, that stock was looking pretty crazy and then none just had the read on the ledge, so. Pretty sizable advantage overall. Yeah, this, if there is a stage where you can make a crazy comeback, uh, FD is absolutely the one to do it, and just as we're saying that, there's the SEI again on uh, to go behind, the shine and make it more difficult for Magi to punish there. And now she's in the corner. Nice. That should, should do it. Should be stock, yep. Okay, beginnings of a comeback perhaps. Question marks floating in the air. Let's see if Magi can make this one happen with two unanswered. Yeah, one of the nice things about Falco is that Falco Shine is so good at dealing with crouch cancel because it kind of just avoids this it entirely. Is huge. Yep. That's actually big. not good for none either. Oh okay. my god, I cannot believe that the down air didn't connect though. Oh, just like that was everything that none needed to maintain the lead and should maybe be getting this. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good shine grab. Magi again with pressure. This percent starting to get, to get a little bit dicey though. Yeah, second hit of Nair can open up to a lot and Nii can just probably straight up kill now if none lets it rip. Yeah, both of them uh, with shield sizes that are becoming increasingly increasingly relevant to their, their defensive limitations. You know, with a shield that small, you're forced a light shield like what we just saw. Mm -hmm. And that is going to do it for game two. We are going to game four. I wonder if we're going to see Magi run it back, or after such a one-sided game, you know, you might feel like maybe we need to mix it up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do think everything that you said before about going into game three is totally, totally valid from Magi's perspective. But it does, it does kind of depend on momentum. That's the big name of the game. And it looks like we are going to go back. The game plan was sound. Just need to go across the finish line. Yeah, and you know, me Melee and in this matchup in particular, such a volatile game, anything can happen. You get an opening, all of a sudden things swing in your favor. And that doesn't necessarily mean that like, you know, just because you lost by a couple stocks doesn't mean you can't, you know, take a game, can't uh, turn it around. So I kind of like the decision to stay on this stage. I think it's still very good for Falco. No jump for none. Nice. Gets this the should hug. be That's it. Oh, I, I don't like the decision to grab the ledge there, actually. I think you can just keep it simple with the back air, or sorry, with the down air, rather. But cleans it up anyway, so good stuff for Magi. All right, four stocks to three now. Only a minute elapsed, not even. Magi again with all the pressure. What's going to be the punish? Close it out a little bit early and just barely misses out on that stock as well. Still keeping up the pressure, though, isn't really phased by the fact that Nun gets the grab and able to, like, still, it feels like, be in control this whole game, which is so important if you're a Magi fan. Yeah, and I think that's that's one of the big hallmarks of picking FD in a matchup like this, is you control the pace, you entirely dictate how this matchup is meant to go, as long as you can play the laser well. And it's, yeah, like, like, it all comes back to that laser, you know, being able to sort of say like, hey, here's a projectile, you constantly need to play around, you don't have platforms to play around it. Oh, the Magi upper. Even keeping the lasers to continue this combo, and we got it still going with the. Oh, oh my god! Reading the tech as well. Oh, the latest hit. Damn, are, are you on kidding our way me? To a four stock yeah. wall, but if none can answer back, say something about it, and he will. He's, yeah, he's done. He's yeah, done. game he, five. <laughs> he made a statement in, in and of itself saying, "I'm going to game five. I'm a little sick of this. I want to play on a stage that favors me, not one that hurts me." One would say uh, that bird got the boots. Some could say that. That is a thing that could be said. Um, All right, this is for winner's side. Just reminds me uh, <laughs> of, of at this same dinner at Pinnacle, uh, 
we were talking with uh, Hugs about Fox's boot color. Oh, gosh. And he's like, I have no idea. Like, I've, I've, I've never paid attention to any color in the game. I don't even know Mango's color. It's just all fla flashing back to me. But while I say that, none taking a clean stock from Magi. 58%, not too bad for Falcon. Good platform okay, yeah. pressure. Caught up on the slide off right here, but none makes it out. Dash dance into the grab. What's it going to be? Yeah, kind of just weaving in and out of Magi's comfort zone, and that's going to be two stocks unanswered. I love that forward tilt. That is, like, actually pretty frame tight. If you didn't hit the forward tilt quick enough, uh, Magi would be a knockdown, get the tech, and then could you potentially punish from there. Yeah, wow. well, keeping it simple yeah, with the downer, I love eh? that. Very, very clean. Just close it out early. You know Nun's holding out right there. Just take the stock and move on. I also think there's something in that situation there. You know, so much to talk about already uh, Nun answering back with the stock. But in that situation where you go for the down air, it looks like really, really simple. Like, oh, they just they just down air. But Magi is like waiting until the hit's done is like just barely about to end and then right. goes for the down air. Some people kind of rush it. They uh, think they don't have as much time as they do and they get a crappier punish because of it. So. Sure. That's experience right there. We talk about punish right now. Double back oh air and the edge guard to boot. Magi trying to make a comeback here in game five. The boots are back once again. Both of them actually, uh, I'm really appreciating, have boots on. But ooh, first kind of big tech flub from Magi in quite some time. And it doesn't cost her too much. And just as I say that, though, the momentum is kind of pulling back into Nun's favor. Big grab. Yeah, ooh, double pummel. That's pretty aggressive there. Yeah, I was going to say you can mash out. Ooh. Is Magi going to get dropped down to loser? She will, and Nun takes the set 3-2. to two. That was as close as we expected, basically. Both players so, so, so capable, but Nun closes it out. Yeah, we're talking uh, three sets in a row now in the last year where all of them went to game five. I mean, again, the matchup favors uh, Nun, it seems like. It's skewed now 6-1 and one lifetime. Yeah. But god damn, do they make this competitive. They really do. Yeah, that that was uh, <laughs> nice to hear the crowd like uh, really getting into it on both <laughs> sides. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but we're just getting whoops and woos and all kinds of stuff. Um, we're still trying to figure out what match we have next, but at this point in the bracket, you know, like like we were saying earlier, there is so much kind of going on. I want to actually see if we can see some of the results of the matches we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, we got Hungry Box 3-0 over Ben, so oh, wow. okay, already off off on his start to potentially. Uh, get it all the way to top eight. Mm -hmm. uh, Aura over Juice Box. Oh, we got replays. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, that was kind of the name of the game. I think Nun had really, really solid callouts on when Magi wanted jump back Phantasm as her recovery of choice, and just called it out with back air every single time. Stock tra or the uh, stage spike, rather, right there. Really, really good stuff. By the way, I'm hearing, I'm hearing Peach and uh -oh. yeah, I'm, I'm hearing hand warmer sounds. Uh, so I assume we're getting Polish versus Zamu next. Versus Zamu. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, just oh yes, yes, yeah, they haven't played. Okay. Yeah, just based on what I'm hearing. But, uh, yeah, just taking a look at the bracket as well. Uh, Plup over Bobby Big Balls, 3-0. Not, not super surprising there. Um, Amsa versus Dawson. And Crudo taking Kodoran, 3-0, is wow. actually a big yeah, upset. 3-0, too. Like, uh, that's like one of those she really does beat Marth kind of moments where just, yeah. Crudo was playing very, very well from what I was able to see mm. before. I believe they uh, beat... Sora, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it did yeah. not make a Sora didn't make top six four. Yeah, so. so good, good showing overall for that as well. And I do hear the peach. Oh. So, but it is Kezu versus Sfat, not. Oh wow. Uh, Polish versus uh, Polish versus Zamu, this which by the way was three one. So you know, this looks like we're gonna have H box. Yeah, I want to. I want to pull some information on this because these guys have definitely played before. And what I had said uh, in my earlier block with the cheat was I think the narrative when it comes to, you know, like a lot of the Peaches are kind of unique in their own ways, right? Yes. Keizu, I think, for a long time had the narrative of he is very Armada-esque, specifically against Foxes. Like, yes. had very similar punish game and punish decision trees to what Armada would do, and it's surgical and it's precise, and it gets the job done every single time. Mm -hmm. S-Fat is very good against mid-floaties and floaty players, I think. So yes. this could be a pretty interesting match overall. I want to see what their head-to-head -head looks like. I have felt for quite a while that Keizu is a player that in maybe the public eye, like public perception of Keizu's skill and where Keizu's skill actually is doesn't always line up. So like at SCL, Keizu had a pretty amazing kind of performance where during those weeklies, 
uh, he was doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the first sort of like, I guess, uh, time where it felt like it lined up with the opinion that top players have of him as a player. Right. And then the results, because he just wasn't entering that much or like didn't have kind of after the level up, so to speak. So this is, if you're kind of used to melee, you might look at this and go, SFAT, clear favorite, um, uh, kind of perennial top 10 player. But Keizu is just really, really good. Has like, been there. He's also like practiced a lot versus Mango. He was definitely one of the like go-to peaches for Mango. And you know, in a way, that is some of the best practice you can get. Obviously, Mango's play style is pretty unique at times, but still, like, that's the kind of thing that's going to level you up. And, you know, Keizu's a veteran of the scene. You mentioned the Armada influence. There's a very famous clip of yep. Keizu sitting there with his notebook, literally, like, kind of with the zoo seat up front, watching him uh, doing everything he's doing, writing notes. So he's been there, been around for a while, and has been working on his game for over a decade. Yes, yeah, and the, the matchup spread is actually straight down the middle as well. 50%, oh. only four sets played lifetime since 2015. Their last set was two years ago. Oh my gosh, we're getting for a treat actually. This is a good example, right? Like the, the set count, surprisingly close. Again, SFAT, a player right now who I would say is pretty firmly top 10, if not like firmly 11th. Like if he's not top 10, he's just barely outside of it. Um, and cannot go lower, and yet I could see it going either way. I, I really do think Keizu, uh, the Peaches in general, have been kind of showing up lately. We've That's really right. been seeing a lot of Peaches do well. All right, we'll be getting into game one in just a second. Here we go, Keizu versus SVAT, game one on Battlefield. Yeah, both players uh, looking to weave around each other's options. One of the big things that always sort of defines any matchup versus Peach is kind of how Peach has to play much more read heavy rather than reaction heavy. There are moments like the chain grab where you have to react, but she just does not have the speed. Meanwhile, Fox is so, so, so fast and uses that speed against her to try to get any advantage that he can. Mm -hmm. A big thing that I noticed in uh, the pool sets for, of Kalamazoo that I got to see today as KZU takes that first stock, Keizu incredibly good at calling out recovery options from spaces and opting for trades in situations that benefit him, and then usually just result in straight up stocks. So we'll kind of see kind of edge guard decision trees come to fruition, maybe here, right, maybe right now. Forward throw, no. Honestly, it was hard to tell if that opening was due to SDI or just bad spacing from SFAT, but if it was the SDI uh, away on the drill, that was a beautiful way to open up SFAT. And it kind of bodes well for uh, people rooting for Kalamazoo. Yeah. Ooh, weak hit in there from left platform. Oh, he's oh. just moving around. Yeah, really, really good way to bait the movement. Uh, keep Kalamazoo from rolling and then ultimately getting the grab. Okay, even stocks right now. Esfat just wants to get away from the action. Finds it. Resets to neutral. We'll see. All right. Gets the grab once again. This is big. It goes for the read on the tech in place, and it ends up paying off. But the shorten does give uh, SFAT a second lease at life, and he's managed to get at least 15%, which is big when you consider crouch cancel in this game. It is so, so important to rack up damage, uh, especially at those low percents. Okay, edge guard position for Keizu. It's just nice. going to be an air. That's all it takes. Almost a full stock advantage to Keizu right now. Let's see if SFAT has the answer. Caught in his movement, but still able to get a grab. Another thing actually worth mentioning about this matchup is Fox is so well known for like the up throw up air as part of his punish, and we're certainly going to see up air be a way that he gets kills, but up throw in particular is kind of like not really a thing against Peach. Uh, it's not something that you can do as consistently or at certain percents. So he has to rely on things like, yeah, like the wave shines to get kills, and of course using raw up airs or air players chain yeah. like that. SFAT actually uh, flubbing a little bit on the movement, looking for mm -hmm. laser landed to follow up right there, but it worked out better for him because it gave him double up air instead. Yeah, and just converting there was so, so, so important just because of the deficit. And wow. I just really like this corner pressure from SFAT so far, but not so great DI. Yeah, the aerial drift from SFAT oh. has been very, very good when playing in the corner, just moving all the way back to prevent shield grab, the easy punish out of shield for Keizu. Yep, Sedge Guard's big. Not, uh, there's the speed once again coming into play. It's one of those things where pretty much every other character in the game, if they wanted to run all the way to the side of the stage, it doesn't take them an hour to do so, but Peach has to kind of be really mindful of her positioning, otherwise she's just simply not going to be able to cover it like other characters can. Uh, okay. Wave shine up slash Keizu kind of nodding a little bit. I don't think he agrees with that one. Yeah, and just like that, uh, Keizu's advantage slowly starting to chip away, but 
we're only into game one. Uh, uh, this edge guard. Again, both of them committing to not giving their uh, opponent the corner or getting out of the, the corner for free, which is good. Going to see a roll reversal here with SFAT. No jump now. Has to Umbrella, yeah. What's going to be the point? Oh, oh, he had the right call out there, but Keizu just barely getting Umbrella out hitbox in time. It's such a surprisingly difficult thing to punish. Yes. Like the Umbrella, like as soon as you pick up melee and, and play against Peach, you know how difficult it is, but Keizu takes the first game and has a pretty has supportive fans. crowd. Yeah. yeah, he's got some fans, you know? Good to see. Of course, you know who else has some fans is SFAT. Just such a legend of the game, really. Like, I, I know we did a recent ranking, or the, a recent ranking was done, not by me, of kind of like the all-time greats of the game, like the, like the literal goats, you know, uh, of all time. And I, I feel like SFAT kind of got robbed. He, he has just been so good for so long and so consistent. Such a good player. Yeah, we'll see if the counter pick comes through. We can even this set count one and one, but it takes four stocks to get there. Let's see if SFAT has what it takes. I like the patience from SFAT. Uh, just trying to bait KZ for coming in, not giving anything for free, and only racking up 26 despite getting down smash. That's very, very, very good. Nice. Okay, getting a few chip damage in. Lil just looks for a raw up smash, but the knockdown could spell trouble soon, and it does. Yeah, even uh, managing to call out the tech in place there, um, seeing the kind of opening when it comes available. I think one of the things that I really, really have always been impressed by uh, is SFAT's reaction time. Like, he's surprisingly good. He's not a player who defines his playstyle by reacting quickly, but just so many situations where you need to, he does. Yep. Edge guard position for Keizu. Takes a little bit of percent on the way out, but Keizu likes that trade every single day. Even managing to squeeze in like 3% of laser damage as on his way back. Pretty solid from SFAT, but ooh, gets caught in the shine once again. Okay, yeah, so the Nair, that was probably one of the first times SFAT gets caught with a uh, Nair off CC from Keizu. It seems like his game plan in general has just been looking for drill on the back of Keizu's shield, and it's been working out. But that Nair actually cost him an entire stock right there. Yeah, I really like uh, how SFAT has been dealing with the down smashes as well. Like, despite uh, Kalamazoo getting like a couple of down smashes each time, he's really only able to get like one or maybe two hits from them because SFAT's DI, his defensive play has been so good. So it's it's really important that SFAT maintains that, but he also needs to kind of clean up the movement a little bit. Does get the other up there there. All right. Keizu at zero. The drill is going to be the name of the game again. Let's see it. Yeah, positions again to the back of the peach right now. It's, I mean, the game plan again, solid. Keizu just seems to find answers though. Yeah, I like that uh, SFAT went for the up smash there earlier. I think he's kind of playing to a win condition in the matchup, which is just like, Peach kind of dies early, you know, like at this percent 77, if he gets an up smash, he will absolutely kill Peach. Uh, even up tilt as Fox can be a useful kill option. So that's something that like Fox can use lasers, uh, use just kind of like basic zoning moves like back air to build up percent like he's doing right now and kill Peach uh, without having to work too hard. Right. Okay, Drill Shine Up Smash should probably do it at this percent, so he oh. just needs to find the first opener. But, I mean, Keizu is just not giving an inch here. Yeah, really, really, really playing well is Keizu, and gets another down smash. And that is going to be game two from Keizu. That's right. With and a little pop-off there. I was like, was this an actual full pop-off? Because he, he stood <laughs> up, but no, just a water pop-off. Yeah, and this is what I was saying about Keizu just being very, very aware of what foxes want to do when they go for a yes. ledge right there. That was just a straight up call out. Fall off ledge, get the nair, take the hit, and then you take the game for it. Mm -hmm. Just really, really great awareness by Keizu. Up 2-0, and it's a reverse sweep that SFAT needs to stay in winners. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, we saw SFAT there taking a deep breath. Uh, moments like these are where it honestly looks like he has Twitch chat open right now, but he's, he's like, come on, guys, give me your best copy pastas. He needs pot friend. <laughs> yeah, he, he really does. He really does. No, but, you know, this is where being kind of a veteran of the game, a seasoned competitor, matters a lot. You know, we see him taking the deep breaths. We see him kind of going, okay, I've won sets like this before. I've been down many a time, and I can turn it around. So back again to Pokemon Stadium, a really, really good stage for Peach, of course, killing off the top, or uh, Fox killing off the top. Let's see how it changes in this third game. 
Yeah, already kind of taking a bit of a, that more backseat approach, just pumping the brakes, put the lasers on, and then when he can find the drill or any type of chip damage, he goes for it. What's going to be the follow-up here? Double shine to get out of trouble. KZ tries to jab. It's not good enough, but there it is again. Yeah, you know, Kalamazoo just setting up this weird, annoying wall for Espat to play that's really making uh, Espat feel like he can't kind of play his game. It seems like uh, Keizu is always positioned in the place where Espat doesn't want him to be, and it's suffocating uh, Espat's movement. You don't see him controlling stage in the way you want. Like, it just, it's it's been an uphill battle for him, and it's because Keizu is playing this so well. Right, yeah, the call and response in all three games so far has been Keizu striking first, Esfat answering later. So we kind of have to see a change in that rhythm, see if Esfat can maybe get a couple unanswered, get a little bit of momentum in here, and take away a game. And I really think if you're in that kind of situation where, you know, you do a movement option and your opponent's ready for it at every time, you need to kind of mix up your strategies a bit more because they're they're adapting to something. They're they're kind of playing around the style that they have. That was an amazing reverse back air there. Pretty much the only way that uh, Keizu could have extended that combo. And the fact oh that he gosh. is still going at 122% all the way to the end. Beautiful play from Kalamazoo. Up a solid stock and maybe going to take it over SFAT 3-0. It's every single call out on the edge guard tree radar. He figures out which way he wants to go when SFAT looks high. And then as soon as he goes for the sweet spot on the ledge, he's just there with the forward.